Hello and welcome to uh, my presentation on Google Analytics for uh, the API and how awesome it is, or GA4 API FTW. And this is for SQL Week, um, who um, is one of the best uh, analytics conferences uh, in the world. And uh, unfortunately, we all can't be there because of Corona. So um, yeah, I thought we'd do this instead. Uh, it's not the same, but you know, let's uh, try and make the rest of it. <laughs> so here we are. Um, this is about the Google Analytics 4 API work I've been uh, looking at as part of my role as a Google developer expert for Google Analytics. So I've had access to this API for a while, and I've been helping um, her feedback on uh, its development and things. And uh, at the end of the uh, presentation, then I'll do a demo of how it's working with Google Analytics R. Um, so um, yeah, so stick around for that. So here is the agenda for today, and yeah, I'm just going to look at introducing the GA4 API and uh, the APIs, and um, they're basically breaking down into the admin API and the data API. So just have a little exploration about what they can do uh, at the moment and what are the sort of ambitions to do um, with them. Um, and then uh, I've got a demo where I um, sort of work with the data API a bit more in depth, um, looking at um, sort of new features it has over the old APIs. So here we are uh, introducing the new GA4 APIs. So I mean, just a quick uh, look at what GA4 is uh, overall. Um, it's the, uh, the next iteration of Google Analytics. Um, you know, going back from its urchin days all the way through to Universal Analytics and uh, now I've got GA4 um, but it's the first one that's actually got a completely new data model um, so it's all event driven um, so it really is a sort of clean break really from the, um, the old data model um, but it can still uh, use sort of uh, GTAG and uh, Google Tag Manager and, and data layer and things like that so it's not as a uh, bigger migration as it could have been. Um, one of the few features that I'm really sort of excited about is that it's got a free BigQuery export. Um, you can stream that data straight in, so it's not a GA360 feature anymore, it's, you can have it. Um, and that's uh, based on, because it's part of a Firebase integration, um, Firebase is uh, popular with uh, mobile apps uh, and uh, create, and it's got lots of other features as, as well as analytics. But now GA4 is uh, for integrated with uh, the mobile apps and the website can all be integrated into one uh, property um, and so we can have all that information and it's the sort of modern way of the web anyway the internet and another nice new feature is the auto events so you can kind of set a few buttons and it will auto add uh, a lot of features um, that you may want to be uh, measuring anyway so that's a sort of brief overview of GA4. It's presumably you know GA4 if you're watching this presentation. If not, maybe stop, go off and look at it, and then uh, we'll sort of look at the APIs uh, later. Uh, yeah, so basically we've got two APIs. We've got the data API, which is just accessing all the report data in GA4, and we've got the admin API, and that's how you sort of change all the configuration data uh, for the GA4. Um, so the old APIs, just to make a note of this, because it is mega confusing otherwise, um, but yeah, so the Google Analytics reporting API v4 was actually for Universal Analytics, uh, came out, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. Um, but they couldn't very well call the API for the date for GA4, the reporting API v5, because that would be ridiculous. So they've gone with data API instead of Google Analytics reporting API. Uh, v4. So, and then there's all these other APIs that are out there that are sort of built up over the years. Some people are still using v3 of the API, uh, the management API, multi-channel funnels. Those all only work with the old uh, properties. The if you want GA4, you have to use the admin API or the data API. Um, so to use those APIs, uh, you've got lots of options. Um, so probably the easiest way to get going if you're new to it all is download one of the client libraries. Uh, and so the supported ones out the gate are Java, Python, Node, Ruby, Go, and .NET. And, um, and you notice R is not on that list, and that's why I've taken it upon myself to, uh, to do that, because it's um, helpful to have uh, uh, Google Analytics data in R. 
Um, but these, that, that's an unofficial one. These are the official ones. So if you want to look at that, um, you go to the developer and you can sort of view, view the code on GitHub um, and run it all um, there. So those are the sort of probably the most popular ways of uh, accessing the API. But then you've also got the REST API reference, it's just sort of JSON, and this is what I use to, and other people use to make other um, software kits to access the API. Um, and uh, it's uh, very similar to how it's always been. Um, and uh, once you get to know it, it's really sort of intuitive how to sort of um, read what's going on. Um, you've got this try this API uh, field where you can sort of authenticate with your account within the browser so you can test things quickly uh, to see how they look. And um, it's a good place to see sort of real get into the grips of what, what the API can do and what it's capable of. Because sometimes there's a features that come up here which um, aren't available yet or aren't documented yet. So it's a good place to do it uh, and get familiar uh, with everything with the API. Well, so now we're going to first talk about the admin API. Um, so I haven't got a demo of this because, uh, yeah, it's still sort of being developed and um, all of this. But I mean, the admin API, um, you could do a lot with the old management APIs, but you couldn't do everything. So you couldn't like completely set up a new Google Analytics account just by pushing a button. You had to do some things in the web interface. Um, and that's still the case with GA4, but there is an ambition um, to do this. They want to support every setting you find in the GA4 admin panel. Um, and um, that's very similar to how Google Cloud uh, work. If you're in the Google Cloud console, um, the web interface is actually an application of the API that you use in other sort of say uh, with the desktop client and stuff. So um, actually the API is developed first and then the web interface is sort of built on top. Um, and, and Google Analytics hasn't traditionally been that. I mean, we all know about the annotations. It was, you know, it was available in the web interface, but it was never available in the API because it was just sort of a yeah, separate system and um, yeah, not integrated. Um, and, and that is something they're looking to address in this launch to uh, make sure that everything is supported. So there is quite a lot supported now, uh, but not everything. But um, you can manage new data streams, you can actually add uh, accounts, you can create accounts, you can create properties, you can actually generate the, the site tag that's going to be used in your Google Tag Manager, say, or um, no, um, yeah, if you're just using it in the web page itself. Um, you can manage the links between Firebase and Google Ads, and you can look at all the user permissions for, for those accounts. So there is quite a lot you can do now, but not everything quite yet. Um, this is a slide I borrowed from Florian at work um, about how they're setting up uh, GA4 properties. And it looks like basically the sort of 1234 is as you're setting up a, an account. And the sort of the first steps are kind of being taken care of uh, via the admin API, which sort of makes sense. But once you get to the sort of more um, setting up custom events and parameters and things, they're not, it's not there yet. But you can see maybe they're sort of working their way down uh, from the start to the end. Uh, to get that running. So that would be really great when that's all done because uh, yeah, if you're setting up a lot of accounts or even if just a few accounts but you've got a sort of certain configuration, custom configuration that you want to um, standardize, then um, yeah, that's going to be possible uh, with just a little script called the admin API. So we really look forward to that. Uh, so now we look at the data API, uh, which is the sort of uh, the main one that I use uh, most of the time. Um, so one of the first questions people think about is why use that data API because you've got these BigQuery exports now, right? I mean, why you know why do that? Well, um, I had a similar question when I first uh, looked at it, but it, basically there's a few good good reasons I think. First thing is that the API is free, uh, and BigQuery you know is not not very um, expensive in storage of the data, but if querying if you're definitely querying it a lot every day for say anomaly detection or something like that, then that will start to add up a little bit. Um, especially if you've got a bigger uh, account. So that's uh, that's one sort of really good reasons. Um, another one is that actually aggregations are good. We are kind of used to data being forced being aggregated to us and um, we don't have that sort of narrow breakdown uh, that we would like, say, to the hit level or the time stamp level. Um, but they're actually quite useful in, in a lot of ways as well, just to get out sort of good reports um, easy, more easily. Um, so if everything was hit data and raw data, then, you, you know, you'd have to spend a lot of time... Uh, uh, making those aggregations anyway. 
So the, the data API kind of is it's more convenient in a lot of use cases to uh, to get those um, aggregations uh, or for your metrics. And it's also a lot faster um, for like small data, as they call it, as opposed to big data. I and mean, BigQuery is you know amazing at big uh, big data, uh, terabytes and all of that. Um, but it's actually yeah pretty slow if you're just you know ten rows or something like that. Um, it still takes a startup startup time to get going. Um, and the API, I think you'll see in the demo later, is you know very quick and instant and, and real time actually. You've got you've got access to the real time stuff. So um, yeah, so it's definitely uh, good from that perspective as well. Um, maybe you don't actually know SQL as well. I mean, you know, maybe uh, you know the API went, you know the tools built on top of the API more than the actual API itself, but it should make it more accessible. It should be easier to reach um, than say maybe SQL. Um, and I think one of the main reasons people kind of um, uh, use the API or use BigQuery in the past was like sampling. It's because when you were calling things from the API, sometimes they'll be sampled. There were workarounds that obviously uh, I've looked at, but that didn't work for users. So. But, um, but now there is no sampling. There's no sampling at all. So um, if you can get that data from the API, it's going to be unsampled as well as BigQuery. So that was maybe a good big reason that why people move to BigQuery, uh, especially with GA360, was uh, to get unsampled data. But now there's not that reason there anymore. It's kind of what I want to make. So um, yeah, so I'll definitely go into depth about this later uh, in the Google Analytics R demo, but just this is for every every um, language out there. These are the kind of main features that I've noticed whilst uh, working on the API. Um, for a start, um, I need to sort of concentrate on the differences above uh, maybe the V4 reporting API for Universal Analytics. So uh, for the start, you've got on-the-fly custom uh, dimensions, which is um, wasn't possible before. You had custom metrics, but you had, didn't have custom dimensions, I think, just looking back. Uh, you've got metric aggregations, I think you had that uh, as well, but that's just uh, quickly getting your totals and minimum and maximum counts and things like that. And a lot of the features of the API are to make it more convenient and quick to get to the uh, information that you want. Um, the real-time API is, uh, yeah, it's really easy to use and using all the same sort of features as the other API, uh, which is which is really nice. Though it is obviously a limited subset of fields, you can, it, things like sessions and things like that aren't, don't actually make sense in the real-time API. Um, you can pivot results to so get that results out um, in a particular long format, um, and that's not so relevant for say R because you can pivot it yourself. Uh, yes, but say you're calling it from JavaScript and you want it in the browser and you want that table to look exactly like you need it for a visualization library or something, that's going to be very useful. Uh, we've got cohorts. Um, one improvement is that you can now do four date ranges at once rather than two, um, so you can get. Uh, you can get to those results quicker about if you're doing lots of comparisons. Uh, likewise, you can batch multiple API requests all at once uh, to uh, increase the speed. Um, there seems to be no row limit uh, from what I've looked at. I mean, uh, we've run a few tests as well, and you can query over a million rows, uh, you know, 1.2 million, things like that, uh, with no sampling as well, um, and all, without paging, actually, as well. So, you know, it all just comes at you in one... Uh, uh, yeah, one page. Um, I'm sure the limits will be reached, and there'll be a bit of paging involved. But it's it just seems gives you the all the data that you need um, in one thing. So that's very makes it a lot simpler to use. Um, and as I said, there's no sampling, but there is this quota system that I'll go into a little bit later as well. But there's no sampling, which is really great. Um, and the filtering, I really like working with the filtering. The filters in the last one was just like a bit of a head scratcher sometimes about you know, the clauses and the you know all this sort of nested structure. But they're a lot more simple to work with now. Uh, I think because of the result of the data model, um, it's um, yeah, it's a lot easier to work with. And we've got ordering as well of the results, so you get it out in the same uh, way. And yeah, just touching on the quota system. So yeah, there's no sampling, but what the thing, I mean, everyone moaned about sampling, and now they're gonna moan about the quota system, I guess, uh, in the future. Um, but uh, the quota system is sort of two levels of it. There's a sort of level where you are, you're requesting it through your Google Cloud Platform project, and that's sort of got sort of set limits. And they're probably a bit more negotiable about um, increasing the limits. You can usually increase those if you want. So say 50,000 per day, which is the same as the other API. Um, yeah, very similar sort of um, metrics. 
to what you had uh, in the last API. But then you've also got this sort of analytics property quotas. And these are sort of a quota that is assigned to each query that you send in. Um, and the more complicated and the longer range date range the query that you make, the more uh, quota of this, more of this quota that you will use up. Um, and yeah, so the limit, and this, this is all still a bit in negotiation, I think, at the moment. So it's not um, cast in stone, but at the moment it's like 25,000 for regular uh, GA4, and then if you've got a GA360, it's times 10, most of those limits. So, um, yeah, 5,000 tokens per hour, so you can't just use up those 25,000 in one hour, you've got to spread it out a little bit. Um, and they've also put limits on the sort of amount of errors and concurrent requests. I think the concurrent request was there, like, uh, like 10 queries at once, which was a good way of speeding up queries as well. Um, but yeah, things like errors, if you have more than 10 errors, and that's usually because you've malformed the uh, API request, then that will block, if you have more than 10, that will block all API requests for an hour, which is actually, yeah, pretty um, pretty serious if you're running that in production or something like that. So make sure it's all working. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's uh, the quota system, um, which is incorporated. But I think if the trade-off is that if you've got this quota system, uh, it means that you've got uh, no sampling. I think that's a really nice uh, trade-off. So now I'm going to do a demo of Google Analytics R uh, GA data. So I'm going to switch to my uh, other self on R Studio. Do a demo of Google Analytics R's uh, GA4 uh, capabilities. Uh, this will be coming out on official release on CRAN uh, sometime this year, um, but it's all being developed at the moment uh, on the website. So um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, look at the data um, that you can uh, look at. I'll just educate a minute. Um, and this gives you a, a table of all the metrics and dimensions uh, that are available. Uh, you use this version in the API. Um, and one difference uh, that you have for the um, from the regular, uh, from the old Google Analytics, is that you can actually uh, download your custom data as well. So if you look at here, we should have a uh, test uh, somewhere. So, yeah, custom event uh, test dimension. So you can actually reach your custom dimensions and metrics and fields. Uh, from there and for that you just specify the property ID as well um, and that comes into play to help validate uh, filters and uh, the data that you're sending in later on. Um, so that's one uh, difference from GA4. Um, but now when you're actually querying data um, we're going to, uh, this is very much like um, the uh, data API from before, but um, here we've been, we're using this function called GA data for the data API, um, this is the property ID for my blog I think, and then uh, you specify the metrics and, and the date range and then you get your data. So if we look at this data there, yeah, and this is uh, all there. So that's just how you sort of st get start up and get going, but probably you're probably more interested in breaking that down for our dimensions and things like that. So this is a, an example of a downloading more data where you've broken it down by date, city and day, week and things like that. So one difference that I've noticed uh, when you are using the API is that actually you don't have to page through any results. It just gives you everything like straight away. So they've it's the port directly this minus one in the limits. Um, and before um, Google Analyt Universal Analytics had a limit of say a million rows, and after that you get the other problem with the rows. Here it doesn't seem to uh, apply, and it just sends you all the data. Now I'm sure there is a facility to page, but it doesn't seem to be needed yet. But obviously once you reach the extreme limits, maybe you'll have to break up the call into API. Uh, into pages or something like that, but we haven't need, needed that yet uh, in, in what's going on. Um, but then, yeah, if you're looking to actually call your um, custom 
dimensions that we were looking at before. Um, you just specify them uh, in the uh, in the dimensions here, and you can get user level events and event level uh, events, uh, custom events, so that you can uh, just call them out. I don't actually have these, so I can't uh, show you that at the moment. Um, but one other thing you can do is that you can actually specify your own custom events sort of on the fly. So this is actually was available in Universal Analytics as well. Um, but you know you can do define it in the um, in the interface as well. But this is you can actually do it in your API call. So what this is doing is it's taking the sessions and active users and then going to divide one by the other uh, to do that. And so it actually calculates that metric for you. Um, there and you can change this to be I don't know, this doesn't make any sense but you see now it's plusing the, uh, the dimension and multiplying multiplying um, you can do all of that so you can make these uh, metrics on the fly um, say you've got something that um, you'd like to be calculating now one thing that is different now is that you can actually also do this with uh, dimensions so here I've got a dimension where I'm sort of um, aggregating city and day of week. Um, so I've got city and day of week here just to sort of demonstrate that what it's doing. But actually, I think in practical cases you wouldn't have that because the the advantage of doing that is then it's aggregating on that level as well. So when you do that, you're going to get some aggregations uh, to the um, level to the dimensions that you're creating. This is not a useful example actually, but if you go back to say source medium, um, you could make uh, the source medium dimension, which isn't actually um, available in the API as a field on its own. Um, and actually source medium in the universal analytics, I always thought it was the wrong way around because it's like um, source is a sub uh, category of uh, medium. So this puts it right the right way around now. Uh, but if you like, you can change it to uh, the other way around as well, if you want to. Um, and you can see it's all aggregating and, and doing all that as well. Um, so moving on from there, then another sort of new feature is that now you can send in four date ranges at once. So it was two before, um, I believe, in the Universal Analytics, but now you can send in four. Um, and this sort of will help um, minimize the amount of uh, uh, data that you can do. So what it does is that it's pulling in and it gives you this sort of data, it's zero index, so that's the first one that's sort of from this data range here. And you've got the date there just to sort of make sure that it's all right. You see it adds this um, uh, dimension here where you've got this date range and this will enable you to do like comparisons more easily um, over the weeks and over time and, and all of that. Um, and it still supports, so I mean, yeah, you can use R to generate these um, dates as well but the it also still supports directly in the API this sort of yesterday today three days ago um, syntax so here we've got only two date ranges um, so we've got date range zero and date range one um, but you can see now that uh, yeah you just can call it in with this three days ago two days ago these are all sort of valid um, in the API <coughs> um, so one of the sort of real um, nice uh, improvements over the last API is the way that filters have been put together. Um, and this is supported in Google Analytics R with this sort of new um, DSL that's been created. So this is the only function you need now for um, filters. And uh, hopefully that should make it a lot easier to use. You don't have to do all this sort of filter clause and things like that if you've been uh, using that in the past. And what it does is it sort of generates this, these filter objects. And, and that's a direct result of the API being, you know, having an easier way of uh, working with filters. Um, and so if you're going to use that, you can just put that into this sort of dimension filter field and put the GA filter in there. And uh, we see the results here now are filtered to Copenhagen um, from that result here. Um, but the way that they've done it is that they've made it so that you can actually uh, combine these um, very uh, nicely, uh, very easily. So, for example, if you wanted to do Copenhagen and London there, then we get this sort of or group. And this is what this, this thing here sort of makes it an or group of do that. And then you can actually feed, feed this filter into another filter as well. 
and sort of build up complex filters, but in a way that will, um, yeah, be actually sort of still easy to, to understand. So for example, if I do this one here, so this one's saying Copenhagen, London, Paris, New York, uh, one of those, day of week is five or six. Um, and yeah, so what you can do then is sort of feed that into this, uh, then replace your filter uh, here. And I think this is a result of the new data model that they've got here. So it makes it a lot easier to uh, to work with, with filters because they haven't really got segments as a such in the API. So uh, you, you sort of filters are doing everything, but you can do a lot more with the filters. So here you get the data coming out of the filter that you're doing. And um, yeah, so that's, that's sort of nice as well. And this sort of carries on when you're looking at numeric uh, filters as well. So here we've got an example of sessions. And you see now we've got this sort of sessions greater than 10 in there. Um, and that works in a similar manner. Um, and you've got greater than and equals, less than uh, equals and things like that as well. So yeah, and then a few other sort of things about filters is that you've also got this um, sort of regex uh, things that are going on. So you can sort of dimension begins with, ends with, regex with, all of that. Um, so yeah, filters definitely much nicer to work with um, in the in the um, in the API. And just to sort of finally give you one example of sort of really complex filter, we've got like you generate a filter here and sort of this variable one f one, um, and then you can add that to this. So this one is this this filter, but then add this sort of clause here that we've got here. And then we, oh, we wanted, oh, actually we want this one here. So this is looking for Google. This is looking for uh, visitors from Copenhagen, London, Paris, or New York who arrived on day five and six of the week, uh, or Google referrers, but not including uh, Google ads. So if you look at that and you get a really sort of long, uh, complex filter uh, built up. Um, in a similar manner, we have uh, ordering and uh, yeah, this is uh, to order things, you just do that, and that's much like uh, the other uh, API, but we've just got a nicer way of sort of working with it in our, uh, to make these data objects, and uh, we've got this plus and minus and things like that to, to work with it. So, so that's sort of easier to work with. Um, from another kind of uh, track, so these are all sort of the ways you can, and then we've also got the real-time API, now the real-time API is working from a different endpoint, but um, it was so similar that you could put it into the same function. You can just add this flag real-time equals true. Uh, you can put all the same filters in that. The metrics and dimensions are different in that they're a subset of the dimensions that you have before. So if you query anything that's not available, you can see we've got probably me uh, looking at my blog at the moment. Um, so yeah, you can sort of see the um, yeah at what happens um, there um, and another thing you have is you also have these sort of uh, metric aggregations so these are just if you've got like totals and all of this so if you you get them all out there then you can extract them out of the results so if put, assign this to a, to a variable um, oops x there you go, and then all acts is a table of the, all the sort of um, metric totals that you're looking at. So uh, totals, max, and min uh, for the things that you're doing. So a quick and easy way of going. You probably sum this up anyway yourself, but it's just a sort of easier way of doing that. So as such, there's no sampling um, in the API, which is really nice. Um, but there is this uh, thing about quotas uh, that we talked about uh, before. And um, yeah, so just to give you an example, what I'm doing, I'm gonna set the verbose verbosity of the feedback so you get a bit more data. So this sort of tells you more things about the request that is it's going in and all this. Um, but what it also gives you is like, keeps an eye on sort of t the qu query cost of what you're doing. So um, yeah, and this has actually been revised down since the beta, so that's nice. So you actually get to do more 
Um, but what you get with tokens per day, that's sort of this 25,000, and that's times 10 if you've got a GA360. Um, and tokens per hour is how many you can do in an hour of that. Uh, what was happening before was that for very complicated queries, you were actually blowing through this 5,000 uh, bits. I don't know what the unit is here. But the query cost was, if it was over 5,000, you'd blow through and then not be able to query anything for an hour. So I think they've lowered that just so that you, you're less likely to blow this um, quota in an hour. Um, and they've also interestingly put sort of like concurrent requests um, a limit on those. So how many you can... Uh, API to the same property at the same time and this server errors per project error as well so this I mean a lot of people are using the default uh, client ID for example for Google Analytics R and doing server errors so that would actually break the uh, API for all users if that happened now uh, with the new API so uh, hopefully no one does that uh, with doing that and uh, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much all the sort of features that are in there at the moment. But you've also, just to make things easier as well for debugging, and say I've not implemented something, um, and you know it's available in the API, and you can create it with this sort of JSON, uh, which is what pretty much all this does, it sort of generates JSON that looks a bit like that. Then you can actually just put that in yourself, um, if you can make it. And then that will um, create and do a valid uh, API call for you if it's valid, uh, and tell you if it's not. So that's kind of uh, helpful as well if you uh, if you want to play with it and go into sort of a very advanced use case. Um, so yeah, so that's all the uh, information we've got at the moment uh, for uh, Google on itself. It's all on the sort of website here uh, with uh, yeah in this uh, reporting API as GA4 data API. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, information about uh, how it all looks and things like that. Um, so yeah, give it, uh, give it a go if you uh, if you like that kind of thing. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, so I hope that was uh, all uh, useful uh, for that uh, demo, and you can sort of see um, a lot of the, the ca my capabilities of our program has improved since uh, I first looked at the library as well. So a lot of that has sort of factored in. Uh, making it nicer to work with. But definitely the API is a lot nicer to work with as well, which really helps um, improve the user experience. Um, yeah, and as I probably said in the demo, then um, yeah, there is, it's all written down in the uh, Google Analytics R website. Um, and this is definitely the uh, place I update as, as things go on. It's not on CRAN yet, as in um, the official R library. Um, because um, we're still in the alpha of the API. Once it heats, hits beta and it looks like it's going to be stable, then I will publish it and uh, it'll be available there. But for now, you can download it from GitHub uh, to try it out. Um, and thank you very much. I uh, hope that was uh, all informative. Um, and yeah, uh, if you'd like to get in touch to talk about anything Google marketing or uh, cloud platform, Google Analytics or anything like that, please get in touch. Uh, I adore Twitter. I'm there on Holly Mar Hollow Marked. And uh, email me at uh, mark at ihnoldwick.com. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.